All right, y'all, so I'm going to share my screen so we can start getting our notes done. All right, so this is our test three study guide. Now, I set a version of this up in the math lab for y'all to do. Um, it's just set up like a quiz. It does not count towards your grade, but it's just like our test. So that way you'll be able to see what it's like before you actually do the test. All righty, so here we go, starting on number one. They want to describe the end behavior. So they're giving me P of X equals negative pi X to the sixth plus X to the fifth minus X to the fourth minus X plus six. So on these problems, I'm going to use the little chart that we made that had the degree going across the top, could be even or odd. And then we looked at the lead coefficient. The sign of it could be positive or negative. So that gave us our little chart. Let me get one in here real quick. Um, if it was even and positive lead coefficient, both ends went up. It was even with a negative lead coefficient, both ends went down. If the degree was odd with a positive lead coefficient, it went uphill left to right. And in odd degrees with a negative lead coefficient went downhill left to right. So on this problem, we wanna find our degree, which is six, cause that's my highest exponent. So I got an even degree. My lead coefficient is that negative pi, so it's negative. So for an even degree, negative lead coefficient, it needs to go downhill. So it would look like the picture where they're both going downhill. So that's the main thing you wanna do on, on those problems is just look at your degree, look at that coefficient, and then that'll give you all the information you need to use your chart here. And y'all, the second one's pretty much the same way. We're gonna choose the end behavior. And then these should go in the same order as y'all's uh, practice study guide I put online. All right, so this is f of x equals a negative 4.8 x to the fourth plus x to the sixth plus 0 0.8 x to the seventh. All right, so on that problem, my degree is a seven, so the degree is odd. Now the reason I picked the seven, they're out of order. So when they're out of order, find the one with the highest exponent. All right, the lead coefficient is a 0 0.8, so it is a positive lead coefficient. So for, whoops, let me get that back. So for an odd degree, negative, I mean a positive lead coefficient, <clears throat> that thing looks like it's going uphill left to right. So you'll just pick the picture they do. It looks like it's going uphill. Can I ask a question? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Um, is it a 4.8? I can't see. I'm going blind on top of it all. Oh, that's in the front of it is a negative. <laughs> it's a negative 4.8 x4. But remember, oh, okay. The leading term comes from the one with the highest exponent. So you're leading. Right, right. I just. Uh huh. So you see everything on that last one, that last term is the leading term. So that's the one where you got to look for the signs on the lead coefficient and then for the degree. Okay. 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 And are you can are you recording this for our study guide? Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'll be able to send this out later. Okay, right. thanks. Uh -huh. So on this one, we're going to find the zeros and state the multiplicity. All 
right, y'all? So they're giving us f of x equals parentheses x squared minus nine squared. So this two out here is going to be the multiplicity for these. But we got to find the zeros, and to find the zeros, we take that factor to x squared minus nine and set that equal to zero. So you can factor this, but y'all have been using the quad. So on this one, to use the quad, A will be one, B will be zero, and C will be negative nine. So the reason the B is zero, because there's not an X term on that. All right, so if we put that into the quad, it would give us two answers, X equals three and X equals negative three. So those would be my zeros. So I'm gonna come down here and I'd write my zeros are three and negative three. And then each has a multiplicity of two. And I got that because that was that exponent that was sitting out behind them parentheses, okay? So this one you had to actually go in and solve it to get the actual zeros and then use that multiplicity, okay? Four is the same thing. We're gonna find the zeros. And state the multiplicity. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. This one they're giving me f of x equals negative 2, and then I got a x minus 2 to the fourth. Then I got a x plus 5 to the third, and then at the end is a x squared. So they're just trying to trick you, putting everything out of order, but the first thing I'm going to do out of these four factors is I'm going to cancel out that negative two factor because it does not have a variable with it. So the only ones I'm worried about are the ones with the variables. So I'm going to take all three of these factors and set equal to zero. And then that one is X equals zero. So two of these we got to solve. So we'll add two to the first one. X is a positive two and then we'll subtract five from the second one and get X is a negative five. The third one, we don't have to solve, it's already solved. So then you would come in and do your zeros. So the zero of two has multiplicity of, so I got the zero of two from this factor. So the multiplicity will be the four that's out behind the parentheses. The zero of negative five it has a multiplicity of three because that's the exponent that was out beside them parentheses. And then my last zero is zero. And zero has a multiplicity of two because that was its exponent. So basically you just take everything, set it equal to zero. If it's got a variable, solve it. And then those exponents are gonna be the multiplicities for those. I'm just gonna let y'all write that in just a second, then we'll go to number five. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving on to five. <coughs> so number five is one of the trickier ones. We're gonna find the zeros. <coughs> and multiplicities. Which all this time they're giving us a f of x equals x to the third minus 2x squared minus a x plus 2. So this one, since they're not factored yet, we got to try to factor this one. And since it's four terms, I'm gonna do the grouping by terms that we did. So to group by terms, 
you take the first two and find their greatest common factor. So x3, 2x squared, they both have an x squared in them. Second GCF always has the same sign as that third term. So the second GCF will be negative. And then the only thing I can pull out of an x and a two would be a one. So we factor out the GCF. So we're gonna write each GCF in front of their parentheses. And this is the point where our parentheses gotta match up when we're done with this step. So let's say we take the x3 divided by x squared to leave an x minus 2x squared divided by x squared leaves the two. On the second two, I'm gonna divide by negative one. So negative x divided by negative one makes that a positive x. And then two divided by negative one makes that a negative two. So now we're happy the parentheses match up. So they technically become the last GCF on this problem. So since X minus two is in both of those, we're gonna factor out the X minus two. Second parentheses, we put what's left. Well, that's gonna be the X squared and the negative one. And remember all this is still technically equal to zero. Now, nothing I can do to this one. So X minus two will set equal to zero. And then the second one, X squared minus one, I'll set it equal to zero. So to solve this first one, I'm just gonna add two and I get X is a positive two. The second one, since it's got that X squared in it, I'm gonna use the quad, A will be one, B will be zero, and then C will be negative one. If you did the quad, you would get a positive one and a negative one on that. So now, since that was an X3, I got my three zeros. So I'm gonna write my zeros down. I got a two, a one, and a negative one. And they all have multiplicity of one. Because nowhere in here when we was rewriting them, all the exponents on the outside at this point would have technically been ones. Well, that's why all of them had a multiplicity of one, okay? What are the two? Oh, is one and negative one, you said? Got them from using the quad. The X's, those are ones and negative one? I'm having trouble seeing, sorry. Okay. I'll try to write a little bigger, it might help. That's, yeah, my, I'm going to the doctor today, so <laughs> got okay. some issues. You know, you can zoom in on it, right? Yeah, I did a little yeah. bit there. Let's see. Huh. All righty. Number six is true or false. If P of X equals, let's see what I got. X Yay. minus nine squared. X plus five to the third. So they're giving me that factored out polynomial. Then the graph crosses the X axis. at nine zero. So is that true or false? So what you would do to get that nine zero, you're looking at this factor, which is the X minus nine. Since it's got an even multiplicity sitting there, so the multiplicity is even. Therefore, so remember, if it was even, it was tangent to the x-axis. If it was odd, it passed on through. But this one's saying, hey, this crosses through the x-axis at the nine, but since it's got a even multiplicity, that's not true. So since the multiplicity is even, it is tangent, which means this thing is false. Now, had that been a one or a three, we would have put true on this, okay? So 
So really, that's all you're looking for. See which factor they got their zero from, and then see what that multiplicity is. All right, I gotta pull my camera up just a little. All right, number seven. We're gonna find the maximum zeros maximum x-intercepts and the maximum turns. So they're giving us f of x equals negative 3x minus x to the So y'all, this problem's not bad. All you gotta know is what that degree is, and then from the degree, we can find everything else. So on this problem, the degree is four because that's my highest exponent. So let me write my max zeros. Well, since the degree is four, the maximum zeros would be four because that was equal to the degree. The max x-intercepts, Well, remember, max intercepts are the same thing as zeros. So if the zeros are at four, the max intercepts would also be four because it's also equal to the degree. And then we had the maximum turns. So this is the one that was different. Maximum turns is the degree minus one. So my degree was four. So if I subtract one, I get three. So that's all you're doing, find the highest exponent. And then that exponent is going to equal the first two answers, the zeros and the intercepts, subtract one, and that'll give you the terms. Okay? Oh, it's degree minus one? Uh -huh, so the terms is degree minus one. Okay. And then so the I terms are equal two. to the degree. Okay. 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 Right, let's see, eight was wanting me to choose the correct graph. And they're giving us h of x equals x times x minus 2 times x plus 2 and then x minus 8. So I'm going to show you what I would do to this. I would figure out the degree first. So the degree is all the x's multiplied. So I got an x times the x times the x times the x. So since I got four x's, the degree is going to equal four. And then that lead coefficient, well, all these numbers in front of these x's is ones. So one times one times one times one is going to give me a positive one. So if I'm an even degree, in a positive lead coefficient, I know over time that thing should both be heading up. So I'm going to show you a picture of what they would give you on that. So they would give you that picture. And notice, this one's going uphill left to right. This one is going uphill left to right. Just got a lot of turns on it. This one looks like it's going down on both sides. And then the last one is going up on both sides. So since mine had to go up on both sides, I would pick <coughs> D. But y'all, I'm going to actually show y'all how to graph that on a calculator. Now, the first thing when you, you I'm sorry, when you got the degree of four, you were just adding the ones, the invisible ones around the parentheses and stuff to get that? Um, well, technically, I was looking at all the exponents they had. And okay. I was just saying, okay, x times x times x times x would give me an x to the 4. So that's how okay. I got the 4. And then I multiplied Perfect. all Thank the you. ones in front to get the 1 in the thing. Thank you. So I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to put in what they gave me here. I'm going to put in an x, and then parentheses, x minus 2 parentheses x plus 2 
and in parentheses, x minus eight. Now, their x's went from negative 10 to 10, but their y values are going from negative 100 to a positive 100. So I'm gonna set the window for the y's by hitting the window. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go down to y minimum and put that at a negative 100. And then I'm gonna go to y max and put that at a positive 100. That way my graph will match one of their graphs. Is again. that right? Say again. I wanted to ask you because yes, I'm one of your lectures. I follow you on this calculator and I'm getting a quit error message. Is that because my window sizes aren't right? Right. On my graph? Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm putting in the exact same stuff you're putting in and I can't get an answer. Um, you got that calculator with you? I have no idea. Huh? After we do this, we'll look at it and I'll try to figure it out. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so once you get your window fixed, because then you would hit graph. And if you notice now... If I put my graph back up here for the answers, you can tell exactly which one that is, right? And we can tell now that it's definitely D that comes down and then goes back up. Okay. Um, Suzanne, the first thing you want to do, let me show you when you when you turn on that calculator, when you get in them window areas, yeah. to fix it back, hit that yeah. zoom button in the middle. And then number six is zoom. Hit zoom. And then zoom? Uh huh. Zoom. Z o o m. I don't see a zoom button. See right there where my finger is. That says oh. zoom. You see what I can't. You can't. Oh, focus. it's oh. But it says zoom. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Hit zoom in number six, and it brings it back okay. into the ten by ten graph. Oh, you're sure right. Okay. Okay, so okay. now when you fix the window, it ought to be good. Okay. Okay. And then you have your window set at what? Um, so what I did on the window, I hit my window button for this problem. So I got negative 10 for the yeah. XN. I didn't change those, but down okay. here what I did, at Y minimum, I made that a negative 100. And then I went to Y max, oh, negative 100. positive 100. So you got to have the minimum be the oh, negative. Okay. And then when you hit graph, It'll draw the picture the same as they had it on the answer sheet, okay? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that was a really, I was really, it was blocking my mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I now you're good, I hope. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the easiest way on really any of these with the graphs. The easiest way is just to graph them if you want to. Um, but like I said, you know those leading terms and lead coefficients, you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. So here's the same thing. Watch this. F of X equals 15 X to the third minus 12 X squared minus 135 X plus 108. So since that's an odd degree, degree is three, my lead coefficient is a 15, which is positive. So for odd degree, positive lead coefficient, this thing should go uphill, left to right. Let me show you something. When you look at these answers, I got two of them going uphill, left to right. I got B, which goes uphill, left to right. And then D goes uphill, left to right. So the one I need, is which one crosses over at that 108, which is my y-intercept. So if I pull these back up, you can tell that B is going back to zero, so that's not nowhere near 108. But if you look at D, that looks like it's crossing at about 108. So I would choose D on that. So let me show you on this one on this calculator. So we would go to y equals, clear what we had, 15x to the third minus 12x squared minus 135x plus 108. I'm definitely going to put my window because on this one, the x's go from negative 5 to positive 5. And then the y's go from a negative 250 
to a positive 250. So look at the answers and see what their windows are and then your graph will look just like them. So now I'm gonna pull my graphs where you can see them and I'm gonna hit enter on here so we can see which graph we want. And y'all know now it does definitely look like D, right? Um, B was way down here um, at the origin where D crossed over like we needed. Okay, so that graph on that calculator, it'll do these problems. You just gotta sort of fix them windows. And then if you wanted your window to go back to a 10 by 10, you would hit zoom and then number six for the zoom standard, okay? All right, y'all, it's time for synthetic division. So using, <laughs> So using Sorry. synthetic division. My favorite. Uh -huh, determine if negative two and two are zeros of h of x equals x to the fourth plus three x to the third plus two x squared minus five x minus 10. I'll let y'all write that. So these answers will be, say again. What's that, what's that first X? Is that a four? X to X the four, four. Uh -huh, plus a three X to the third, plus okay. a two, two X squared, minus okay. five X, minus 10. Okay. So we're looking for yes or no answers on these. So first I'm gonna check negative two. So since we got two zeros we're checking, we got to do our synthetic division twice. So now I'm going to write down the numbers of the polynomial. I got a one, three, two, what's that, negative five, and a negative 10. So for me to answer yes, I better get a zero in the box. If I get any other number, we put no. All right, so to check this negative two, that one goes down. One times negative two is a negative two. Three plus negative two is one. One times negative two is negative two. Adding two and negative two is zero. Zero times negative two is zero. Negative five plus zero is negative five. And then finally, negative five times negative two gives me a positive 10 and negative 10 and 10 give me zero. So for two, I mean, for negative two, we would definitely put yes. All right, then you would come down and check the positive two for the same numbers. And then I make my box. So once again, zero gives me yes, any other number gives me no. And I'm gonna do this the same way, bring down one. One times two is two. Three plus two is five. Five times two is 10. Two plus 10 is 12. Ooh, let's see, 12 times two is what, 24. Negative five plus 24 is 19. 19 times two is what, 38. And y'all, there's no way I got a zero, but I think I get what a 28. So since that's not a zero, this one is a no. Yeah. So basically just run that synthetic division on those and be done with it. All right, here's the whole test like that, because that's my favorite. Do what? I said I want the whole test like that because I think that's the oh. easiest and that's <laughs> my favorite. Oh, you don't like this next thing then, because this one says find a polynomial function of degree four with zero of negative three with multiplicity three <clears throat> and zero of zero with multiplicity one. 
So I got negative three, three times, and then a zero, one time. So these are the ones where I started out putting all the answers. And then what was my last one? X equals zero. So there's my four answers, which I needed because that is a degree four on this one, okay? So then we added and subtracted to get everything moved over. So all three of these, we're gonna, we're gonna add three to both sides, add three to both sides, add three to both sides. And then this one's already done because it's already got a zero on that right side. All right, so I'm gonna have to turn my sheet over, but what we're now gonna do is put all these factors inside parentheses. Now this single X, I'm gonna put it in front so that I get a X times X plus three times X plus three times X plus three all equal to zero. So y'all, there's no choice but now to start foiling. And what I'm gonna do is foil the last two first. Now, had you wanted to, you could foil the last two and actually do the first two. My battery's dying and not plugged in. Say again. I'm sorry, my battery's dying, but I'm plugged in. So I don't know what's going on. Oh, on your laptop? Yeah, on this laptop. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to fold the last two first and bring everything else down in the front so that I get an X squared plus a three X, and then three times X is another three X, and then three times three gives me a nine. So one more thing I do before I start multiplying again is in here there are like terms I'm going to add together. So I get an X squared plus six X plus my nine. All right, so I fold the last two. So now I'm going to foil those together. So I'm going to bring down that X and then make really big parentheses. So both of these, we're going to distribute to all three of these. So X times X squared is an X to the third. X times six X is a six X squared. X times nine is a nine X. Three times X squared is a three X squared. Three times six X is 18 X. And then three times nine is 27. Now, before I multiply with that last X, I'm gonna add my like terms. So I got an X to the third, takes care of that. I got six X squared and 3x squared, that'll give me 9x squared. So that takes care of those. My x is, I got 9x and 18x. Ooh, let's see, 9 and 18, that's what, uh, 27x. Takes care of those, and then I got my 27. All right, so the last step is to now finally take that last x and distribute it through them parentheses. x times x third is an x to the four. X times nine X squared is a nine X to the third. X times 27 X is a 27 X squared. X times 27 is a 27 X, all equal to zero, but all I needed was that polynomial. And I'm happy because they wanted me to have a degree four in my highest exponent it is definitely a degree four. Oh, so y'all, that's the trick on that when there's like two on here where you got to really do some foiling. So that was one of them. All right, on this one, you're going to find the other zeros given zeros of i and 4 minus square root of 5. So notice, they didn't give me a polynomial on this one. They want us to realize that if I got a degree four polynomial or any degree, that if I got 
I as one of my zeros, then automatically the other zero would be a negative I. And if I got a four minus square root of five, the other zero would be four plus square root of five. So remember, that's because uh, imaginary zeros and radical zeros always came in conjugate pairs. So notice on this one, they wanted me to find the other zeros. On 13, we're going to find a polynomial. So 13, find a polynomial. Of lowest degree. We have zeros of square root of three and three I. So if I'm gonna find a polynomial of lowest degree, I gotta realize that if square root of three is a factor, then also a negative square root of three is a factor. And if three I is a zero, then a negative three I is a zero. So those must be zeros also since they always come in conjugate pairs. So now you would write out your four answers, x equals square root of three, x equals negative square root of three, x equals three i, and x equals a negative three i. Add and subtract to get them zeros. So I'm gonna subtract square root of three. So x minus square root of three equals zero. Add square root of three. So x plus square root of three equals zero. And then here, subtract three i. Add and then finally, add three i. All right, so this problem is almost like number 11, except you got the radicals and the uh, imaginary stuff. So now I'm gonna put everything in parentheses. and all that's equal to zero. So now we're going to FOIL. Now what we're going to do is FOIL these conjugate pairs together from the radicals. And I'm going to FOIL those imaginaries together. Because by FOILing radicals, you get rid of radicals. And then FOILing the conjugate imaginary stuff will get rid of the imaginary part. So we're going to have two big parentheses after this step. All right, so here we go. X times X is an X squared. X times square root of three is a square root of three X. Then you get a negative square root of three X. And then at the end is a negative square root of nine because three times three gave me nine. The second set, I'm gonna do the same thing. X times X is X squared. X times three I is a three I X. Negative three I times X is a negative three I X. And then negative three I times three I is a negative nine I squared. So if you notice in the middle, those cancel. On both of these, the middle terms will cancel. So let's see what's gonna be left in our parentheses. So this one has an X squared, the middle canceled, and it's minus. So what's the square root of nine is gonna give me a three. And then over here, you bring down your X squared, the middle cancels, and that negative nine I squared is now gonna become a positive nine. Because remember the I squared equals negative one on those, okay? So you turn that into a negative one, and any time a negative times a negative, made that positive. All right, y'all, the last step is to foil this together. So let's see what we get. X squared times X squared is an X to the four. 
which I'm happy with because I had four zeros. I needed degree four. All right, x squared times nine is a nine x squared. Negative three times x squared is a negative three x squared. Negative three times nine is a negative 27. So the last thing I'm gonna do is add like terms. So let's see, we get our x to the fourth. Uh, nine minus three, that's gonna leave me what? Six x squared minus 27 equal to zero. So all I'm looking for is that polynomial. I don't know, every time I write, my papers want to fold up on me. All right, so I'm going to let y'all write that a second. So y'all, there is two problems on here. We got to do that foil in number 11 and number 13, okay? All right, let's see, this will be number 14. So 14, um, they're giving us f of x equals x to the third plus 6x squared minus 3x minus 18. Negative six is a zero. Find the other zeros. So they're telling me negative six is a zero. I'm going to find the other zeros. So remember, since that's the x to the third, there's three zeros all together. They're giving us one, so we got to find the other two. So what I need to do is divide that out with my synthetic division. So let's write my numbers down. I got a one, a six, a negative three and a negative 18. Now, since they're telling me that this negative six is a zero, we better get a zero when we're done, okay? All right, so we'll bring down to one. One times negative six is negative six. Six plus negative six is zero. Zero times negative six is zero. Negative three plus zero is negative three. And then that negative three times negative six is a positive 18, which gives me a zero remainder. So since that was the first zero they gave us, we're going to use those three numbers now with the quad. A equals one, B equals zero, and C will equal a negative three. If you do that on the quad, it'll give you X is a square root of three, X is a negative square root of three. So those would be my final two zeros and I'd be done. All right, questions on that, y'all? All right, good to go. All right, 15, find all rational zeros of f of x equals 19x to the sixth plus 4x to the third minus 6x squared minus 13x plus 2. So to find all the rational zeros, that's where we were doing the plus or minus p divided by q. So P is going to equal the two, and then Q is going to equal the 19. And what I had to do with each number was find all the factors. Well, the only factors of two are going to be a one and a two. And y'all, the only factors of 19 would be a one and a 19. So what I need to do is take the one, divide by both of those, and then take that two and divide by both of those. 
So plus or minus P over Q is going to be a plus or minus 1 divided by 1, which is plus or minus 1. And then it'll be that plus or minus 1 divided by the 19. So that one I cannot do anything to. So then I take the 2 and start doing the same thing. Plus or minus 2 divided by 1, which is a plus or minus 2. And then plus or minus 2 divided by the 19. And that's all my factors. So my answer will be the plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 over 19, plus or minus 2, and then plus or minus 2 over 19. So make sure they got plus or minuses in front of them, which all of them did. And then just watch out for the combinations, okay? So all the factors of the last number divided by all the factors of the first number on those, okay? All righty. 16, find the domain. So y'all should be getting good at domain by now. So they're giving us f of x equals x to the third minus x squared plus a x plus a two all over x squared plus 11x plus 18. So remember, on the domain, we don't even care about the top. All we care about is the bottom. So take that bottom and set it equal to zero. Now, when I get the answers, I'm going to write them in set builder notation and interval notation on this one. All right, so to solve that, y'all can use the quad. A is 1, B is 11, C is 18. If you did that on a quad, it would give you two answers. X equals a negative nine. X equals a negative two. So first I'm gonna do set builder. X such that X is a real number. And X is not equal to your two numbers. Now on this one, you gotta put the answer in ascending order. Ascending order means start with the smallest number and go toward the biggest. So my smaller number would be the negative nine and then negative two would be the larger. Now interval notation, we start at negative infinity until we hit that negative nine. Union from negative nine until we hit the negative two. Union from negative two to the positive infinity. And I think that's the whole reason they wanted these numbers put in ascending order was so when you came down and did the interval notation, that was already in the right order for you, okay? All right, another domain, f of x. Whoops, let me write that. Find the domain. All right, f of x equals a negative 2 over x squared minus 2x minus 35. Now this one they only wanted to answer in interval notation, so I would probably quad that to get the two numbers. A is 1, B is a negative 2, C is a negative 35. If you quad that, it'll give you two answers. X is a 7, X is a negative 5. So all we got to do now is put them in interval notation. So we start at negative infinity until we hit negative five. Union negative five till we hit seven. And then union seven till positive infinity. If you notice on these domain problems, they both have negative infinity and they both end in positive infinity. You just need to figure out what numbers are getting kicked out on those middles. All right, determine the 
Vertical asymptote. So they're giving me G of X equals X to the third over three X to the third minus the X squared minus 52 X. So I'm gonna play with that bottom and I'm gonna take the bottom and set it equal to zero. Now you got too many X's on this one. So the first thing you're gonna do is factor out one of those X's because they all three had an X. So if you divide by the X, you get a three X squared minus X minus 52. All that's equal to zero technically. So y'all, this one, nothing I can do at the moment with that one, but this stuff right here, I'm going to quad. A is three, B is negative one, C would be a negative 52. Now I'm not sure what quads gonna give me on that, so let me punch that up real quick. So clear that, go to program and quad. Enter and enter. So my numbers were three, negative one, negative 52. So I'm gonna hit enter. So I don't want to decimal. So let's see, I get what a 13 over three and I get a negative four. Now remember this X, bring it down and it automatically is gonna give you zero for that one. Any GCF will give you zero. So notice I got possible zero, 13 over thirds, negative four. But y'all, what happens on this one, you've got to set that X third equal to zero. Well, the only number that'll equal zero when you cube it is a zero. So notice the zero on top matches the zero on bottom. So we got to kick out that bottom factor so that the only vertical asymptotes will be the 13 thirds and then the negative four. So remember, on the vertical asymptote, always check and make sure that the top does not have the same factor as the bottom. All right, y'all, so I think I got about two more left, let's see. So 19, horizontal asymptote. So determine the horizontal asymptote. And they're giving us f of x equals x squared minus seven over two x to the fourth plus three. So the horizontal, you got to look at the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. So the degree of the top is the two. The degree of the bottom is the four. So on this one, the top would be less than the bottom. So anytime the bottom had a higher degree than the top, it was y equals zero. So you had three cases. If the top was bigger than the bottom, there was no horizontal asymptote. And if they were equal, then you had to look at the numbers in front to get the A over B. All right, then the last one was to solve X squared plus 19 is less than two X. So this is the one where I set everything equal to zero and then I tried to solve it using the quad to get my two answers. So to get this equal to zero, you gotta subtract two X first. So you get an X squared minus two X plus 19 less than zero. So now we wanna quad this, A equals one, B equals negative two, and C equals A 
negative 19. Well, let's see if we could even factor that. If I was going to factor that, I would have to find factors of 19 that add to get a negative 2. Well, y'all, there's no factors of 19. Is 1 and 19. They add to give me 20. So there's no way that that 19 will factor to give me a 2. So let's see. We're going to quad that real quick and see what it gives you. You get a 1, negative 2, 19. So if you quad that, look, you get imaginary answers. So anytime I did this and I got imaginary answers or radical answers, this was a no solution. So they want you to use the empty set and be done. Now I'm pretty sure if my number 20 is a no solution, most of the ones I've seen on the study guide were no solutions. Um, but just check it and make sure. All righty, so I'm going to go back to the main screen. Y'all got this? And stop that. All right, y'all, so that's the 20 you want to know. So I'm going to quit recording now. That way I can send this later to y'all, okay?